welcome back to the channel welcome back explorers or should i say to all of my australian viewers <laughs> welcome back to the channel i am a rugby fan i'm an american football fan and idiotically i've never learned about australian rules football i know about it i know you've got to be harder than a coffin now to play it but i don't know the rules Genuinely, I don't understand the goalposts, I don't understand the tackling, I, so here we are. We're going to learn together. I genuinely don't even know how long a match lasts. So, let's delve in together, shall we? If you are new around here and you like what you see, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know anything I might have missed or anything this video might miss. Because again, it might not be perfect. Let me know who your team is that you support. Let me know what team you hate. And other than that, let's go. Oh, and old explorers, join me, won't you? I know there's a few of you from Australia, which is awesome. So let's jump into it, have a little look. I have no idea what's going on here, but let's jump in. A game in which players saw like eagles where a player can run between 12 and 20 kilometers a game okay the guy narrating it is from the united kingdom so if he does get anything wrong please let me know down in the comments a game that's fast-paced and brutal yeah it is Ugh. a game that says the meek may inherit the earth but they will never win games of football this Whoa is AFL. For me, this is the greatest sport in the world. So let's look at the greatest competition of them all, the AFL. You would allude to it as the Australian version of the English Premier League, the NBA, the NFL. It's the most watched competition by far in Australia. That's crazy. It's the most attended sport That's in the world. That's crazy. The AFL itself is contested by 18 sides that are all steeped in wonderful history and fabulous. All right. Adelaide Crows, the Brisbane Lions. Uh, no idea what that one is. Collingwood, Essendon, Fremantle Dockers. Oh, weirdly, that might already be my team purely because of where I grew up. The Geelong Cats, the GC Suns, the Giants, the Hawks, Melbourne something. North Melbourne, Power, Richmond, St. KFC. Sydney Swans, West Coast Eagles, and the Western Bulldogs. Are the Fremantle Dockers any good by any chance? Rivalries. <laughs> the game itself is played between 18 players on the, on the field of play at any one time. With an exchange bench of four players that can be switched over 90 times. They play over four 20-minute quarters with time added on. And the, all the players that line up in a certain formation. So to go through it, you've got your full forward line. Um, that are comprised of two forward pockets and a full forward. These guys genuinely there are to attack the goal and trap the ball in the goal area. You may hear the terms pressure forwards. You may hear the terms crumbs if you watch the game. These guys are your strikers of the league in your foot. This is a weird analogy. one. Then you've got your half forwards. These guys are there to set up scoring shots, to attack the goal as well, and are also charged with forward pressure and locking the ball in that area. And they will be very similar, I would say, to an attacking winger in the soccer. Kind of, you know, like your Cristiano Ronaldo when he was a United player. Very adventurous, marauding forward type player. Yeah, then yeah, you have yeah, the yeah. centre line players. Now, these guys are the ones who recover the ball from the back line, look to set up shots, get the ball forward. They predominantly run two ways. Kind of, they're made up as well with the two guys on the outside there, your wingers. They're kind of very rehearsed in defensive and forward. Kind of like a wing back would probably be the best way to describe them. They're not quite an attacking winger because they do a lot more defensive jobs in the modern day AFL. Okay. But they're probably the most important part of the game. Then you've got your half back line. Now they're to recover the ball from the back line and to clear the ball to the midfield and to the forward line. These guys genuinely are very quick. The smaller players on the flanks, the half back flanks. And you have a term you hear a lot key defense. It's crazy that this is all one team. I can understand now why it looks so hectic if there's 36 players on the field at one time, 
all trying to get to wow okay players and key forwards these are usually the players that are in the center of the half back line and the center of the full back line who again their job is to be a defender to really lock down get the ball out of the defensive 50 and to spoil all marks and you can see that here this is the format you can kind of evenly spread and then you've got these interesting ones here they're called followers now this is quite confusing for someone new to the game but they're comprised of a ruckman and two on ballers so a traditional name is the Rook Rover and the Rover so the, generally these guys you'll see at the stoppages so when the game gets stopped at centre bounds particularly you'll see these guys around the centre usually comprising of one really tall guy and two smaller players and these guys are genuinely there to get the ball out of congestion they're real tough they go in and get the ball these guys usually genuinely are the strong hard men of the competition and really the exciting players to watch they play on a ground that dwarfs a standard soccer field. In I was going to really say, it's absolutely that huge. They play sport, particularly the American ones. Like we say, they cover up to 20 kilometers per game, the average midfielder does in the AFL. And the game premise is to move the ball from one end to the other. And there is three predominant ways to do that. One is the handball, where the player uses their fist to reject the ball to teammates. It's a very unusual style. Oh, it's like a... You may see something similar in game... <laughs> It's like a weird, and I don't mean this offensively, it's just, it looks like a volleyball, like, punch. That's crazy. Gaelic football, if you're... Gaelic football, true. Watching that, but it is very predominantly to the AFL. The other more obvious method is the kick, and that's where they can gain up to 50 metres at a time, aiming to try and hit what? a player up. Oh, what a kick. Or they do kick to space and allow players to run on. And the final way to move, and it's something that you see a lot more in modern-day AFL, very similar to the basketball, they have to run with the ball at hand, but must bounce it once every 15 metres. There isn't a limit to how oh. you, do that. you could run run end to the ground to the other if you do that. Very rare though, because the game doesn't allow much space. And when we're kicking, we're looking for these marks. The, their referees wear highlight a yellow kits, because if they do, that is bloody awesome. Now, it's one of the most spectacular aspects of the AFL. They do! Oh. It's something that you don't see really in any other sport as exciting as this. And it's a game that allows you to use the opposition as a stepladder. The ball must travel 15 metres, without anyone touching it prior to the player marking the ball, and it can't hit the ground. And if you do that successfully, we call it a paid mark. And that's where a player gets effectively a free kick from wherever he is on the ground with a 10 metre protection area to play his next kick. Perhaps the most common mark you'll see and the biggest aim is to mark inside 50. Okay. Now you'll notice on the field whoa, whoa. Now, there's these little red lines indicating where the 50 are, these semi-circular okay. arcs. He's good, he's good. If a player good. successfully takes a mark inside 50, they get 30 seconds to attempt to score a goal and the object of the goal is to kick through the two middle posts if you do that okay. you'll get six points if you hit the post or you get it through the other posts or a player takes it of the opposition and runs it through the behind runs it through the goal there's no own goals in this game it's a single point resulting in the opposition getting the ball and there will be a restart from that goal square there in the defensive 50. Okay, so just let me clarify. Through the middle posts, six points. Hitting the posts anywhere else or someone running it through, one point. Fair enough, nice and easy. Game start is a really, I think, I... Hold on, I saw 108 with some of the scores. They scored that many times in a game. Iconic part of AFL, and it's something that really attracted me. And it's not <laughs> a centre bounce, and this happens at the start of each quarter. And after every goal, and it is very similar to an NBA tip-off. It's contested between two ruckmen who will then attempt to jump oh, good hands. while jumping for a ball in the air and attempt to tap it down to their rovers or a tap it to punch it ball forward and get it away from the congestion. And perhaps the most entertaining part for any foreigner is how we have our restarts in the game. You'll notice that when the ball goes out the sidelines, we have a, a throw-in. And you'll see how the umpires throw it in. They get a lot, a lot of distance of that. And they create a mini version there is of a bounce between Whoa. the two ruckmen. And it's really, for all intents and purposes, an umpire-led throw-in. It's a real weird part of the game. What a long show. It amused me when I first started watching this great sport. Now, tackling is one of the best parts. It's a very physical style of game. And if you're familiar like I am in the north of England, rugby league, tackling yeah. is one of the iconic parts of it. It's what we all enjoy doing as kids. 
Tackling is permitted, but it's got to be between the shoulders and above the knees. And you'll hear the crowd if you watch the game. Oh, the what a dive! What they're going to do is request the holding the ball rule, which means every time a player is tackled, they are given enough time to dispose of that ball. They must release the ball either via legal handball or a kick. And if they don't have the opportunity, it's called paying holding the ball. Or you'll hear no prior, which means you're tackled before you have the opportunity to release it. We also okay. have wonderful moments like bumps and shepherds off the ball. A shepherd is where a play, player effectively bumps or uses his shoulder to shoulder to protect another ball carrier from a tackle. Makes and sense. The bumps you'll see quite often in a thing we have called taggers. Now, taggers will remind you of players like Patrick Vieira <laughs> and Roy Keane. Enforcers, they stop the good players playing and they look to stifle the opposition. Oh, their job is just to try and really get aggressive. Tactics. Yeah. Now, our wonderful AFL season over here has played over 22 fabulous games with the top eight making up the finals. And if we look at it, the top eight can be one of the most confusing things in the world. But as you can see here with this graph, the top four go into what is called a qualifying final where first and second place will be at home and fourth and third will be away in that contest. And Makes the sense. losers of them games will go into what's called a semi-final and they will be playing... Five, six, seven, and eight. Five and six play in an elimination final. It's a knockout style type event. And the winner of that gets to play the loser of these qualifying finals. And then the winner of that goes on to whoever okay, won the it makes qualifying sense. It's first quite simple. Qualifying but second. If you Sounds don't know quite it. confusing, but if you follow yeah. that graph, it should get you through. Yeah, yeah. And then we're at the biggest dance of them all 100,000 people in September at the MCG. 100,000 people in the stadium. That's incredible. In we all got the day off to watch it. You grab yourself a barbecue, grab yourself a night. You got the day off to watch the finals. And you cheer That's on your doing team it right for a sport. That day and cheer them on to glory. But it's not just two team glory that we have in the AFL. Whoever finishes top of the ladder wins what's called the minor premiership. And it's not really that important. No one really talks about it. It's kind of just you've got the first qualifying final we also have the Brownlow medal though and that is a bit like our FIFA player of the year and it's a very interesting way it's done it's voted by the umpires on the ground that day they give a 3-2-1 <laughs> and vote for the top three players on the ground and it's called the best and fairest and if you get suspended throughout the year you forfeit your right to win the vote it's a very wow. tough competition to win and only yeah. the cream rise to the top, top there we have a Coleman medal for the leading goal kicker, and the leading goal kicker over here can range anywhere from 60 to 100 goals a year. And we have a Rising Star Award that's given that to the best crazy. player age 20 or under on January the 1st that year, and must have played 10 or less games at the start of that calendar year. But for me, the greatest thing about this game of footy isn't the game itself, it isn't the marks, it isn't the, the fans. spectacular, <laughs> wonderful goals and virtuoso goals. But it's about the fans. It's about the cheer squad who use their spare time to make wonderful banners for the players to go run through at the start of the game. The noise they make, the chants they make. It's the rivalries that make up this game. And it's a friendly rivalry. Unlike the vicious rivalries we have in soccer in the UK, it's banter and it's fun. And it's not death at all costs. It's <laughs> the equal passion for both sides and the love of the game. And it's about how spiritual this game is, how we remember our indigenous forefathers for allowing us to play this great game on the allow the great grounds that the land is represented on. Doing it's a hacker. The community rounds we have, the indigenous round, the wonderful Guernseys, the wonderful dances we have at the start of the game. It's about bringing a whole nation together. The whole nation stops March to September to watch this great thing for me. But perhaps I'll save the best for the last. The iconic team song. The most iconic things in soccer are watching at Anfield singing You Never Walk Alone. It's a wonderful sight. But there's nothing so charismatic. I'm a West Ham fan, so it's on forever, blow forever blowing bubbles. But yeah, I get it. I think, but seeing 22 blokes after they've won gather in the changing rooms to sing their famous song. And it is a wonderful thing to see. It's a wonderful spectacle and a wonderful sight. This is you, the wonderful game. But you do see a lot of that in rugby as well, though. A lot of singing, especially after matches that you've won. Anyway, we're nearly done. Of AFL footy. 
the greatest oh. game in the world. Welcome to a sport that combines not only the ferociousness of rugby league, the silky skills of soccer, the theatre of wrestling, the pantomime of NFL, all done without pads and a script. This is AFL and this is sport at its purest. Thank you, Blue Abroad. Go and subscribe to his channel. That was... I'm not going to lie, that wasn't as in-depth as I was expecting it to be, but it has genuinely, genuinely piqued my interest for this sport. I am now very intrigued to learn, because I saw a few times in clips there, when a ball gets kicked to someone and a receiver catches the ball, they have to stand still or can they continue running? That's, that's just one thing I picked up on. I am definitely going to look into the teams because there, there seems to be a... a, a real broad history amongst some of them so i'd like to look into the teams of afl maybe that'll be something i do next let me know who your team are let me know if you enjoyed this leave a like comment all that good stuff other than that have a great day be well and bye bye